Welcome to the Lone Wolf North American Bike Park Review Tour. My name is Andrew. And I'm Drew. This summer we're going to be hitting the road to not only review the trails at bike parks, but give you some of the best information on local spots to eat, lodging, camping, and activities to do off the mountain. So strap in, let's hit the road. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Lone Wolf Bike Park Review Tour. We are here in Steamboat Springs, Colorado to check out the Steamboat Bike Park. Now we knew ahead of time the park was under construction and a lot of the upper trails would be closed, but it was on our route to some other parks and we just couldn't help passing it up, especially when we saw one of the oldest Western stores in town, FM Light and Sons, and Chili had to buy himself a hat. So it looks good, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Between that and the rodeo, we figured why not give it a stop. Let's check it out. Uh, we're really glad we did. There were some really fun trails on the lower half of the mountain. The town was awesome, good nightlife, a good vibe, and uh, definitely one of our favorite stops so far. Uh, Chili, talk a little bit about the trails and what you've liked the most. So first up, sadly they're putting in a new gondola at the mountain, so there was only one chairlift open that accessed the lower half of the mountain. So that meant all of the black and more advanced terrain was off limits for us this year. It's kind of a shame because we heard really good things about it, but we have to say the blue and green trails that were on the lower half of the mountain were probably some of the best we have ever ridden at any bike park. Yeah, and on top of that, I mean, the trails were built well, the maintenance and upkeep was really nice. There was not a lot of washboards or braking bumps. Um, something that really stood out to us was all the rollers were very nicely shaped, right? We just came from a park that had a ton of rollers on a beginner trail and they were very peaked out and could really lead to some dangerous situations for inexperienced riders or advanced riders who are really going fast on those trails. Um, but the blue and green stuff at, at Steamboat was really a lot of fun. The way that they weaved them through the trees, there's lots of undulations in the terrain, some mellow grade reversals that would kind of keep some people off the brakes, but gave you just enough time to like recuperate and get ready for the next corner. Um, it gave you tons of time to pre-jump and float little sections, and it really was a blast. We had a good time on downhill bikes and enduro like type trail bikes. Yeah, so Lickety Splits is one of the green trails, and that's actually the first trail we dropped in on. And about halfway down, we all stopped with huge smiles on our faces, and we were literally like, is this a green trail? Like, did we read the sign right? Is this actually a green trail? Um, and what's cool about it is they somehow managed to balance a trail that is easy to ride, really friendly to beginners, but is still fun for advanced riders. There's all kinds of little side hits, little berms, things you can scrub. There's even like um, a series of pumps that you can start doubling over and gapping if you start going faster. So there's a lot of really challenging stuff. The other trail we really had fun was Rustler's Ridge. That's their blue flow trail. And Drew, you wanna talk a little about that? Yeah, so there was a lot of fun features on this trail. And again, the theme with a lot of this stuff is I think a shorter travel bike, like a, a 160, 29er, or 27.5 bike, kind of like the all mountain enduro rig is, is ideal this year at Steamboat because of the construction. Um, but it would really make the most out of our efforts to pump the little rollers and start gapping them and, and picking up speed. And it really was a lot of fun because there are some pretty sizable doubles that you could link up and just slam the bike into corners, um, find some straight lines, pre-jump things. And it really made for a good time until you got down into Buck and Bronc, which was I think one of the only blacks along aside from uh, Creekside yeah. that was open. And Buck and Bronc was like a wide open, jump trail that basically ran along the outlaw coaster which we'll get into later yeah. um but it's just pretty mellow but long like tabletops maybe 30 40 feet i don't know something around there but it yeah. uh it led you right back into the village and and gave you some high speeds i think we were hitting lips between 28 and 32 miles an hour like based on our computers and we were cruising like getting some serious distance the lips were built really nicely there wasn't a ton of braking holes or bomb holes in any of it and uh, it was a blast like it, that was kind of like our uh, ending to every lap i was in heaven on that trail it was so much fun some big jumps definitely kind of pushed the speed limit on there but it was so much fun to ride and then of course since the mountain was a little bit smaller thankfully there's a ton of stuff to do not just in the village but in town so in the village at the base it's actually really cool they have a creek that runs through right where the uh, chairlift is so you can hang out in the creek there's kids swimming around playing and stuff it was we, nice to dip your head in we as well. even got in there a little bit yeah we got a little carried away <laughs> but <laughs> it was really nice the other thing too is the coaster was so much fun there's a lot of places that have little luge tracks and stuff but this thing was high speed an absolute blast we had so much fun on that thing racing down checking our times against each other that was really cool. There's also a mini golf course that's really nicely built. It looks pretty brand new, actually. Yeah. Um, and a lot of other activities for kids, including rock climbing, uh, a couple other things like a bounce house, stuff like that. 
uh, you know, props to Steamboat. We really are excited to come back and ride the full mountain and get to experience some of the more technical, gnarly terrain up top. Um, but that being said, there is a very strong community in Steamboat and a ton of trails to ride. If you're also looking, you know, to get some more pedaling and fitness based, you know, riding in, you can either do an EM, uh, an e-bike tour with a guide from the mountain and they'll take you up on their tour. And there's also multi-directional trails that Steamboat has built on the mountain. So there are downhill directional only trails and multi-use, multi-direction trails. So if you're looking to get some riding in, you can pedal up, do some really nice single track rides and just kind of extend your mileage and get some more riding in. Now let's talk places to stay. So the first night we were camping up on Buffalo Pass, totally free up there. Uh, it can fill up on weekends, so just keep an eye out for that. You know, there are other places to camp. It's also right near Strawberry Hot Springs, which is cool if you wanna check out the hot springs. The rest of the trip, we actually stayed in an Airbnb that was pretty close to the mountain. There's a shuttle that takes you right there if you don't feel like riding. We will link that Airbnb in the description below and on our website. There's a lot of stuff to do. Friday and Saturday nights, every weekend uh, during the summer, Steamboat has a rodeo. So we went and checked that out one night. Um, we went downtown for their like late night happy hour. Downtown was going off. There's a ton of people out, friendly people, and um, all in all, it was a great vibe. Yeah, if you're looking for stuff to do during the day too, if you're hot, you can go down and float the river. They have rafting, you can just swim in it. It's a really nice experience. All right, so we know that there's a ton of stuff to do outside the mountain, but sadly this year the mountain was lacking a little bit. Drew, what did you think? What's overall for this place? Um, man, I have a hard time. I, I don't want my rating to sort of make people think that, that Steamboat isn't that cool because I love the town. Um, I love the food, the vibe, the scenery. I mean, it's in a beautiful little valley there. And the trails that we did get to ride were actually a lot of fun, right? Like, I mean, they were well built and I had a great time. Um, but the fact that we couldn't get up top to ride some of the other stuff, it was a little bit of a damper, but we knew that going in. So I'm gonna assume that the trails up top are gonna be of the same caliber of, of what we rode down below. And because of that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to give the park probably about an eight and 8.25. I, like I might even wanna go to an eight and a half, but yeah. um, I really enjoyed the park and I'm very excited to come back again. I just wanna point out that the fact that this guy is saying that blue and green trails would be an 8.5, 8.75 is a big deal. Like he is 100% tech only. So that's pretty cool. Um, I honestly would probably give this place a nine. I think out of all the bike parks I've been to, this place had the scene, the culture, the vibe, the food, the riding, like it was the whole package. And it's a really cool place that you can bring your family as well. You know, it's a really family friendly resort. But if you're there with a bunch of buddies, you can still go and hit the bars and do all that stuff. So it, I mean, it really has everything to offer as a complete package for everybody. So seriously, I would probably give it a nine. It's a cool yeah. place. Thank you so much for watching you guys and keep in mind we have more of these videos coming and more that we have already done. So check out our YouTube video, our YouTube channel for the rest of those videos. And uh, thank you so much for watching.